He's a bastion of bowling force. She's plotted her team for the winning course. Today, two of the fiercest teams in collegiate bowling, University of Illinois Urbana and Florida State, square off for the craziest 10-pin challenge you've ever seen. This is not your father's college bowl. This is Rock and Bowl. Let's meet our mighty competitors for today's round two action. The Seminoles of Florida State. Beth Lott, Jennifer Harris, Crystal Waltrip, Bill Stark, and Danny Verdecchia. The alternate Jason Quest to the coach, Amy Harris. And the fighting line on the University of Illinois, Irv Vanna, Amy Ward, Kevin Rohr, Nicholas Sarzak, Michelle Rusky, and Captain Rick. Welcome to the All-American Sport Park here in Las Vegas, Nevada. I'm Gary Seibel, along with 12-time PBA titleist Randy Peterson. And folks, you've never, ever seen a place like this before. And I guarantee you, you haven't seen the kind of bowling like we're going to show you tonight. Yeah, we've got your traditional bowling, but we also have some way cool, way out crazy bowling, man. You said it, my friend. Folks, let me explain the format tonight. We're going to bowl a standard 10-frame game, and we're going to use a Baker-style format. What that is... That's the players alternating frames. But wait, there's more, Gary. What we're gonna do is we're gonna have rock and roll frames. We're gonna plug them in between the standard frames. Total, total of scores up at the end of the game. Highest score wins. Dude, dude. Curious about our rock and roll frames? For more on that, here is our own Bell of the Bowl, Taylor Baldwin. That's right, we're talking bowling gone wild, and we're testing our player skills in ways they've never been tested before. Imagine bowling in a disco, or bowling like a daredevil, or how about when you can't even see the pins? We're going to see all that and much, much more. So don't miss out on this crazy, wild, hip fun. And this is round two. All 16 of our collegiate teams competed in round one. We take those scores, put them together with round two scores, and the top eight teams will come back for the quarterfinals. But don't forget, one of tonight's teams will walk away with $1,000 in scholarship money. Enough said. It's time for Rock and Bowl. Referee Bob Prevost on hand. As always, you're in Rock and Bowl to handle any possible disputes we may have. So we are set to go. The Seminoles of Florida State, the Fighting Illini, the University of Illinois Urbana. And first up will be Beth Lott for the Seminoles. Beth, a 20 year old junior from Jacksonville, Florida. 276 high game. She's got a high series of 650. And almost an equally as impressive, a 3.91 grade point average. There's her first shot. And Randy, she leaves the 6-10. Yeah, maybe first shot jitters, but that ball goes left. You know, got a good break. She didn't leave a split, leaves an easy spare, the 6-10. 6-10 for Beth Lott to pick up. Here's the deal. You got to move left on the approach to give yourself angle at this spare. And the best way to shoot this is straight and hard right at the 6-10. Seminoles women team ranked number nine, but I'll tell you what, and Beth did not come close to either one of those pins. I think uh, maybe some uh, some nerves got were, were a factor there, Gary. You know, she's got to get settled down. Here's Amy Ward of the Fighting Illini, the University of Illinois Urbana. Fighting Illini ladies ranked number 15. The men are 21. And there is a 2-4-5 leave for Amy Ward. Okay, you know, real simple. You gotta, you gotta get the ball into the two five area. The two pin goes into the five, but this this bear's tough because it's very choppable. <laughs> you know what that means? Yeah, well, I know that you love cooking and that kind of stuff. So you're chopping, dicing, <laughs> okay. mixing, that kind of stuff. <laughs> Amy Ward, her second shot, looking to pick up the spare. Looks like she's dead on, and in fact, she is. Perfect. You know, and a nice start too. You know, you know, open frame, you get your team off to a nice start with a spare. One frame of traditional bowling in the books. The Seminoles of Florida State working on an open. They've got eight in the first frame, but the Fighting Illini, University of Illinois, Urbana, they're working on a spare. Oh, I hear 
the music. It's time for Rock and Roll and Officer. I swear, I was just speeding to look for a buffet for you. We're in Vegas. Harris, Taylor falling. Oh my God, she's got Rock and Roll for us, baby. Speed bowling. <laughs> Our players are putting the pedal to the metal because they're going speed bowling. The objective to throw the ball as fast as they can. Now, each team gets one ball, and every pin knocked down counts for one point. And here's the catch. Only the fastest ball gets to keep their score. How will we know? Well, we got a big, bad Officer Tim standing by with a radar gun. And there he is, sunglasses and all. He's got his radar gun. Very insecure without it, Randy. Officer <laughs> Tim, the captain of our donut squad. Yeah. As Taylor said, the object is you bowl as fast as you can, but fast isn't good enough. You have to be accurate as well. And now on the approach for the Seminoles of Florida State, Jennifer Harris, there's her score on the speed part of it, and it is 17 as clocked in by Officer Tim's radar gun. So a speed rating of 17 and a pin count of 7. Here is Kevin Ruler for the Fighting Illini, and he's fighting mad with that throw. Yeah, 20, baby. Oh, yeah, that, that spear had some speed to it, didn't it? It did, 20 for the Fighting Illini, and they will win our speed bowling with a speed of 20, and they will pick up eight pins. And so one rock and roll frame is in the books, and it goes to the Fighting Illini, eight zip over the Seminoles of Florida State. Back to traditional bowling in the second frame. Here is Crystal Waltrip for the Seminoles, and she leaves a one, two, and four on the left side. Well, you know, she, the ball obviously didn't get to the pocket. Not enough friction and not enough hook, so her options are move right on the approach. You know, good tip for folks at home. Normally when you move right on the approach, you find a little bit drier uh, part of the lane. When you move left, you find a little bit more oil. She needs to move right, tighten her lineup, get a little more hook. They call it Crystal Burger, her teammates too. She hangs out with her boyfriend, Bob. That's one of her interests and hobbies. Great spare. And Crystal picks up the spare to get the Seminoles, Seminoles off that open schneid. This is textbook, Mr. Seibel. Watch this. Uh -huh. Left of the head pin. The ball takes out all three pins. The first mark for the Seminoles. And an important one because you don't want to fall behind early. No. Don't want to start with two opens. Nick Sarzak for the Fighting Illini, University of Illinois at Urbana. Hometown, Palatine, Illinois. Here's his shot. Hey! That's not a bad way to start there, huh? Right? Gets up, throws his first ball, and just knocks it in the pit. A little trick with Nick gets it done in the second frame of traditional bowling for the Fighting Illini. Oh, we've got a whole lot more coming up. Daredevil bowling, if you dare. But first, we're going to take a commercial break and be back with more of Rock and Roll here on TNN. Rock and Bowl on TNN. Here a look at Florida State coach Amy Harris. While well, you've already seen both the ability and competitive nature of today's two teams, we thought we'd show you a little more about Florida State, a team with heart and soul. Team Florida State realizes that, above all, you have to have fun. And sometimes it's not what you say, but how you say it. Florida State's number one football team in the nation. But we're going to be number one... <laughs> Florida State. <laughs> Florida State Seminoles. We're number one in football. We're gonna be number one in rock and ball. Yeah, baby. There you go. And there a look at Danny Verdecchio. The fifth bowler, anchor bowler for the Seminoles of Florida State. And now up on the approach, in the third frame of traditional style bowling, it's Bill Starkin for Florida State, 22-year-old senior from Rochester, New York. Bowled in the 1997 Intercollegiate Bowling Championship Nationals. Oh, and leaves a 2-10. Now he's playing the big hook, and sometimes when you play a big hook ball, if you don't hit the pocket, you get left with some nasty stuff. 
Leaving the 210 object here, Gary. Got to get the ball left of the 2 pin. Slide the 2 into the 10. His teammates call him Wild Bill. You can see a little bit of that in his eyes as he focuses in on his task here in the third frame. He's got to make the 210. Picks off the 2, but Randy, as we know, better than none. Yeah, better than none. If you're not going to make it, at least get one. As the University of Illinois gets ready to bowl, we thought we'd take a closer look at this competitive group from Urbana, Illinois. Team University of Illinois has proven itself a group of fierce competitors, but sometimes things don't always go as planned. I'm sure we've all had the time when the ball flew backwards and you just want to walk off the lane. I walk up there and uh, slip on the lane. I just fall straight in the gutter with the ball stuck in my hand. Of course, there are ways to combat this bad luck. And I always got to have my purple towel. I've had it for like seven years, and I think I've washed it twice. I tend to wear the same t-shirt underneath our bowling shirts or the same necklace. On my right sliding foot, I have to have a piece of tape reminding me on little things to do. And it's right now, think and don't suck. This would be the, uh, this is the, that is the purple towel. This is the purple right here. Purple. Eight years, baby. Eight years. And there is Captain Rick Galumba. He is the anchor bowler for the Fighting Illini, and he's getting his team pumped up, and he look, looks like he's doing a good job at it. There is Michelle Ronsky for the Fighting Illini. She's next on the approach in the third frame of traditional bowling. Here's her shot. She's from Glen Ellen, Illinois, Ooh. and uh, kicks out all but the three. Very lucky there. She barely cut a piece of the hat pin going away left, and very fortunate to just leave the three pin. And Michelle's favorite movie, and I know you'll be interested in this, Randy, is The Muppets Tank Manhattan. Well, you know I like puppets. I know that. Career goal undeclared for Michelle. Maybe she'll decide to be a puppeteer. <laughs> Hook ball. All right. There's the shot, picking off the three pin. Barely, but barely is good enough to get to spare for the fighting Illini, University of Illinois, in the third frame. And here's a quick recap of the score. University of Illinois, they leave after three frames of traditional bowling by eight in rock and roll frames. Ah, hear the music. Do we dare? We dare. It's time for Dare Devil Bowling. Once again, here is our own bowling babe, Taylor Baldwin. Oh, I love you, Garrett. Now, our next rock and roll frame is just one little bump. They gotta throw their balls long and hard to make the jump, because we're going Dare Devil Bowling. Now, they gotta jump their balls over the ramp and clear the trucks. It might look easy to you guys, but not only do they need speed, they gotta watch their hooks. Each team gets one ball, and every pin knocked down counts. Evil can evil your heart out. And here we go. Randy, this is hard stuff. It really is. And I noticed you left all your toys out on the lanes, Gary. <laughs> now on the approach for the Seminoles of Florida State to do the daredevil bowling. Here is Danny Verdecchia, North Course, Georgia, his hometown. Four 300 games, but that doesn't mean anything here. He leaves a 3-9. Not bad, not bad. You know, there's a lot of skill involved here. If you're going to throw the hook ball, you got to judge that up just right. Coming off that ramp. So it is, Verdecchia leaving two pins. Randy, you've tried this. How difficult was it? Well, it was very difficult. I think I got eight or nine, but my the way I approached this, I went with straight speed and really straight and really hard. Okay, straight and hard is the key, according to Randy Peterson. Rick Columba, the captain of the Fighting Illini. He's on the approach now for his attempt at Dare Devil Bowling. Here's his shot. Over it goes, and oh! Whoa! Captain Rick comes on through. Oh, you know, he's got to do some kind of a daredevil, and what skill he showed there. That's Tim Pierce, brother. Give me some high five to the crowd there. And the Fighting Illini take their second consecutive rock and roll frame, 10 to 8, over the Seminoles of Florida State, and they are in command in our match tonight. Now back to traditional style bowling. This is the fourth frame of our traditional Baker system game. Beth Lott on the approach for the Seminoles. And here is her 
first shot in the fourth. And a late kick of the 10, so just the four and seven remain. Great break there, Yuri. She was looking at a disastrous split. The 10 pin falls late, leaves herself with a very easy 4 7. Shoot it cross lane, move to the right, give yourself angle to make the spare. They call a roo, as in kangaroo. And by the way, Randy, and I know that you'd be interested in this, she's an English literature major. And, and weren't you yourself a, uh, an English lit major? <laughs> yeah, not hardly. Okay, but at least I got a laugh out of you. <laughs> Here's Beth Lott for the oh, spin. Oh, my. Not the traditional way of doing that in traditional bowling, but it still counts for I, the spare. I tell you what, she, she dodged a bullet there. This ball looks like it's going to miss wide right, and then all of a sudden it flips in the back end. The forkman goes to the wall, kicks the seven out late. Beth Lott, skill and luck. And she's got a real big supporter there. As a matter of fact, a bunch of them goes up to high five them. They loved it. Now Amy Ward for the fight in the line eye. They're in the lead. Here's her first shot in the fourth frame, oh. and we saw it coming, Connor Randy did. Four, six, and ten. Yeah, you know what? Right through the face. Uh, she she didn't get a very good break by not chipping the four pin out. But you know what? When you throw the ball through the snout, you know you're going to leave splits. Four, six, ten. That is what is facing Amy Ward, who says that she laughs all the time, but. I don't see her laughing now. This is not a laughing matter. Trying to keep the fighting Illini in the lead and does the smart thing, Randy. Absolutely. You know, that, that split's almost impossible to make. She got the count. You know, you've been such a friend of mine for such a long time now. I think you deserve a little something. Well, thanks. You know, it's my favorite part. All right, folks, don't go anywhere. We're coming back. We've got more rock and roll friends coming up. We've got disco bowling. And by the way, how about a trivia question? The 3610 pin formation. Is known by what name? A, Funky Monkey, B, Wounded Troll, or C, Poison Ivy? The answer in a moment. Don't go anywhere. We're coming right back here on TNN. My, my. Welcome back, everyone, to the All-American Sport Park here in Las Vegas, Nevada. The answer to our trivia question, the 3 6 10 pin formation is known by what name? Well, if you answered C, boys and Ivy, you are correct. You know, our trivia questions, Randy, could actually become quite contagious. But if you have some fun bowling trivia questions for us, where to send us an email, go to country.com. Well, you know, we are in our official seven-frame stretch. Randy, everybody's having a great time. Dan and relaxing. I know this is your favorite part. Tell us why. Well, the reason why we're having so much fun, Gary, is one reason and one reason only. Our in-house band called the Pin Setters. All right, we're having fun, but you know something? There's a serious side to this. There's a whole lot of cash on the line, and one of tonight's teams is going to win some of it. But there's more to come as we move on with Rock and Ball here on TNN. So let's do it. This is the fifth frame of traditional bowling. And Jennifer Harris for the Seminoles of Florida State. 21-year-old senior starts it out. Oh! Yeah. Nice. That's the way to do it. This is how we do it. Yeah. Just get up there and get yourself some 10. Look at her go, and she loves it. And Florida State needs that. They need to stay in this match. Kevin Rohr, the Fighting Illini, University of Illinois. By the way, the University of Illinois, Randy, had the highest total score in round number one, 268 total, and Florida State came in at number three with a total of 243. So these are two of the top three teams from round number one, and Kevin Rohr leaves the one, three, and a six. Now, being a left-hander, it's a little bit different than the one, two, four. The one, three, six, the lefty's got to get the ball to the right of the head pin, and then the ball will deflect off the head pin and take the three, six out. Now Roar on his second shot in the fifth frame of our traditional game. And hurry up. Just like I told him. Just like Randy said. And because of that, we're going to look again as it moves down the lane. Ball hits the head pin just to the right. The flex off takes the 3-6 out. University of Illinois leading after five traditional frames. Ten of the rock and roll frames. They're up. And yeah, 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 we hear the music. We've got disco bowling coming your way once again. Let's go down to Taylor. Get ready to 
shake your booty, baby, because we're going disco bowling. Now, it's just like traditional bowling, except we've turned the place into a disco inferno, complete with music, lights, and our own mirror ball. Now, each team gets one ball, and every pin knocked down counts. So let's go disco. And for the Seminoles, here is Crystal Waltrip. She is up on the line. Here's a guy, and I'm talking about you, my friend, Mr. P. Almost did Saturday Night Fever instead of Jonathan Travolta because you're that good. Tell us about Disco Bowling and just how tough this is. And we can see it was tough for Crystal Waltrip. Yeah, obviously, she got six pins. Listen, this is really tough, and it takes a lot of skill. There's a bunch of stuff going around on the lanes. It's hard to see your target. You really got to stay focused. So a six count for the Seminoles and Crystal Waltrip in our Disco Bowling frame. Now here's Nick Sarzak for the Fighting Illini. They call him Large Marge. Really? Kind of like a boy named Sue, I guess. I'm not <laughs> sure, but in any case, it won't make a difference if Nick once again can do the trick in Disco Bowling. Oh, yeah. And he will because he has beaten Crystal Waltrip by one pin, seven to six. So far, the Fighting Illini have taken all three of our rock and bowl frames. Sixth frame, and it's going to be Bill Starkin for the Seminoles of Florida State. Imagine that. He used to live in Rochester, now living in Florida. I wonder why. Ah, uh, geez, we don't know. Of course, uh, you, Mr. Peterson, maybe hailing maybe. from Florida. Maybe weather. Could be. All right, gets a good break, goes right through the face, and only leaves a 3 6. However, you got to be careful with this spear. It is choppable. You throw a hook at this spear, you run the risk of chopping the 3 off the 6. Remember, straight and hard. That's what you've always preached, my friend. You watch the guys on the Pro Tour, the girls on the Pro Tour, they shoot their spares straight and hard. So now, Bill Starkin, if he was getting that telepathical thing happening there from you. All right. He did hook it, though. That he, was not a straight shot. Yeah, but it, was, it wasn't a big hook, though. And here is Michelle Ronsky, the Fighting Illini, University of Illinois at Urbana. Here's her first shot in the sixth frame of traditional bowling. And oh, 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 just kicks out half of the bucket there, as a matter of fact, and winds up with the 5-8. Yeah, you know, that her spear just got a whole lot easier because of that great pin action she got. She tripped the bucket out, leaving herself with easy spare, the 5-8. Easy spare for you. There got is it. Michelle Ronsky picking up the spear for the University of Illinois. Watch this ball just get to the right side of the five pin. The five pin takes the eight out. And so both teams spare in the sixth frame of traditional style bowling. We're just past the halfway point. Showtime bowling is coming up as we continue with rock and roll here on TNN. Don't go away. And a quick recap of the score. University of Illinois leads in our traditional Baker system scoring game by 11 in rock and roll frames. It's getting closer. Let's take a look at how we work our rock and roll format. The eight teams with the highest overall point total from our first two rounds win $1,000 for each victory, then move on to compete in the quarterfinals for $2,500. Top four teams then advance to the semifinals to compete for $5,000. And from there, it's on for the rock and roll championship, where the top two teams will compete for $10,000. Now back to traditional bowling. You know, here's the deal, Gary. You know, the, the players have got a couple of shots under their belt. It's time now to get down serious. Let's get down and dirty. Let's start striking. Danny Verdecchia, if you are listening to Randy Peterson, it's time to get down and dirty. Florida State Seminoles looking for a strike. Oh! That was real close. That ball just flips a little bit harder in the back end, and he strikes. Notice the hip and tried to come over and take that 10 out. That's called the scout, but it didn't make it. All right, Verdecchia now with his attempt at converting the spare in our seventh frame. Very, very important because the University of Illinois leading by only nine pins in our traditional game. The Seminoles have whittled that lead down, and now Verdecchia does convert. You know, a solid frame, a solid frame for Florida State. Captain Rick. Rick Galemba, Fighting Illini, University of Illinois at Urbana. 
He is their leader, and he needs a mark for the Illini. Oh! That was beautiful. Oh, oh, we just hit the ball oh, oh, oh. Careful, you got a couple more frames left. Well, after seven frames of traditional bowling, it's the Fighting Illini leading in our rock and roll frames by 11. The Fighting Illini, University of Illinois at Urbana. We've got music. We've got showtime bowling. Here is Taylor Baldwin. <laughs> What's behind curtain number one? It's our own Vegas style rock and bowl frame called It's Showtime Bowling. Now, it's just like traditional bowling, except our pins are hidden behind this flashy Vegas style curtain. Now, each team gets one ball, and every pin knocked down counts for one point. So, on with the show. Here, the Seminoles of Florida State is Beth Lott. And Randy, the difficulty of this, basically, you're bowling blind. You're right, it takes a lot of skill. There's, you can't see your target, you can't see the pins. Bowling on instinct right here. And we'll find out how Beth's instinct is, and uh, oh. not too shabby, just the three standing after all is said and done. I'd say because of the difficulty, not bad. That's pretty pretty good there. So a total of nine for the Seminoles in our Showtime Bowling Rock and Bowl frame. Here is Amy Ward for the Fighting Illini. And she'll try to at least match Beth Lott with a nine score, but she's looking for a strike, oh! and that's what she's got. Oh, yeah! What a great shot! And a big pick for the Fighting Illini, as they will do one better than the Seminoles in our Showtime Bowling Rock and Roll frame. And as a matter of fact, the Fighting Illini have won each and every Rock and Roll frame so far. They have won the first four. And that has helped them maintain a comfortable lead in our overall competition. That's right. They're, you know, they're losing the traditional 10 frames. They're winning the rock and roll frames. That just goes to show you how important and what a difference those rock and roll frames can make. Back to traditional bowling. Eighth frame, oh, oh. Jennifer Harris for the Seminoles of Florida State. A little more pin action there, and that's a strike. Just leaves the eight pin. Not a, not a real hard spare. Ooh! Hey, you know, I think that pin might have had an extra coat of paint on it. <laughs> but it's still a spare. <laughs> Any way you look at it. Kevin Rohr for the University of Illinois. And the Fighting Illini are working on a strike, so they are looking for a double, yeah! Oh, oh yeah, he loves it! What great pin action! This is the reason why we use reactive resin bowling balls. Take a look at this. Here's the shot. Now watch what this ball does to these pins. The head pin goes to the side wall. It throws the six pin, in, six pin into the five, and then takes out the 10 pin, and he's pumped. Pumped indeed is Kevin Rohr, as he has given the Fighting Illini two consecutive strikes to work with, heading into the ninth foundation frame. Well, we know we're dizzy, me and Randy, anyhow, here at Rock and Bowl. We've got something called Spinning Ball. It's coming up. Get the Dramamine and get ready. You're watching Rock and Bowl on TNN. Come on back down, you hear? It's Sport Park in Las Vegas, Nevada. We're having a great time. You're watching Rock and Bowl on TNN, and we're sure you're having a great time at home as well. University of Illinois has laid in our eight traditional frames of bowling so far, and 12 pin laid in four rock and roll frames. They're up. And we're getting set for the foundation frame. Frame number nine, Randy, why is this one so important? Very important. It sets up the 10th frame. You know, you get three balls in the 10th frame. Strike in the ninth, you could do some serious damage in the 10th. Crystal Waltrip for the Seminoles. Here's her first shot in the ninth. Oh. And uh, misses the head pin, leaves that one, and the one to its left, that would be the two. You know, I just don't think that uh, she's lined up right. You know, she's thrown a hook ball, which, which I think you, you need to do, but she's either missing her target too far to the right, or she has her feet too deep. And now Crystal will look to pick this up, as again, our traditional game is very close, and that was also kind of close. Yeah, there was no problem there. That ball had a little bit of hook to it, so she wasn't going to chop it or anything. Watch this. That ball hits just just kind of, just a little bit slightly left of the head pin. Not a lot, but because the ball had hook on it, it covered the two pin. And here is Nick Sarzak fighting a line eye. His first shot in the ninth. That looks good. Oh, yeah. That's big there. That's a three. 
Oh, no, that's, yeah, that is a three-bagger. That's big. He's a big guy. That's power. That's revolutions. That's 10 in the pit. He is a big guy, and he's going up into the stands to receive congratulations from the public here, though, his shot. Oh, how does it look? Nothing left. There was a vortex created behind that ball, and he likes it. Look at him. Get you some of that. Yeah, baby. All right, it's time for our next Rockin' Bowl frame. What goes up must come down. Spinning wheel going around. Here's Taylor Baldwin. Oh, my gosh. And our next frame, I've got a hunch that our players may regret what they had for lunch because they're about to spin and bowl. Now, it's just like the game Pin the Tail on the Donkey, except with bowling. Our Rockin' Bowlers will spin around five times, five times, folks, and attempt to pull Dizzy. Well, if that wasn't hard enough, they only get one chance, one ball each, and every pin knocked down counts for one point. So let's spin, baby. We call it spinning ball, and this is, in fact, harder than it looks. It's like the grown-up version of pin the tail on the donkey. When you spin around a little bit, and then you got to try to pin the tail on the donkey. Here you got to pick up a 16 or 15 or 14-pound bowling ball after spinning around. And right now, Bill Starkin of the Seminoles is being spun around, and he'll have to try to bowl within five seconds after being spun around five times. Yeah, this is really tough. You know, you got to try to get your equilibrium straight, get your head straight, and then try to heave that ball down the lane. He looks a little uh, wobbly-legged there. He looks woozy. Oh, he, he takes looks three woozy. steps. Oh, my. That's a different uh, oh, style. Oh, wow. That was fantastic technique. You know, he didn't, fool, he didn't fool around with taking five steps. He got up there two, three steps and just threw it. And, Randy, this is something that you have tried. A little bit dizzy to begin with. Did that make it dizzier for you? <laughs> Yes, it did, and it's it's really tough. I got up there, I threw the ball, my head was spinning, and uh, I, I managed to keep it uh, on the lane, and I actually knocked a few pins down. And kept your lunch down as well. <laughs> That's right. And so now, Michelle Ronsky for the Fighting Illini. She is on our spinning platform. Four, five times around, Michelle gets off, picks up her ball, Moves over to the approach. Appears to be okay. Fairly level-headed. Here's her shot. Goes oh. right. Hey, not bad, though. You know, it, it, you're, you're out there, and it's like somebody's tilting the lanes on you. And that is the first rock and roll frame that has been won by the Seminoles of Florida State by a score of 9-7 to seven over the Fighting Illini from the University of Illinois, Urbana. So we are now moving back to traditional style bowling. And as we all know, it all comes down to the 10th frame. Three balls, possibly, if you spare, if you strike. Here is Danny Verdecchia for the Seminoles. Hang on. Oh! Very nice. Very nice. Gets a little love tap from the sixth spin, Gary. But they needed that. That's a big strike. Two more would be just great for this team in the 10th frame. And was that a particularly fast ball? Didn't have a lot of velocity on it? No. Watch this. I think this ball... Notice he's playing deep inside because he throws a... But watch the little soft love tap on that 10-pin. On that Nothing like a love tap. Well, I'll tell you what, Danny Verdecki is going to try to put another little bit more love into this shot as well. His second shot in the 10th frame, and of course he is looking for another strike and won't get it this time. As a matter of fact, leaves himself the 2-7 and the 8 sleeper. Well, 2-7-8. Um, you know, the object here to make this spare, you want to get the ball, the right side of the 2-pin. You've got to throw a hook on this shot, Gary. Get the ball right of the two pin. They throw their two pin into the seven pin, the, and the ball takes out the eight pin. And it looks like a possible 171 should he pick up the, the spare. Oh. So make it a 170 for Florida State Seminoles in our traditional game of bowling. 170 traditional game for the Florida State Seminoles. Now, don't forget, the University of Illinois, they are working our three consecutive strikes heading into frame number 10. Who better to have up than team captain Rick Golemba, his first shot. Looks good. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. This is why this team had the highest score in the first round. They started slow. They came back with a four-bagger. And that's why they're there. <laughs> oh, Randy, you know, you really got to 
pick up your energy level a little bit. Watch this, third arrow, now watch this hook ball. Gets out to about the second arrow, and this ball is high flush. It's all strike for Rick Galemba, team captain. Oh, man, he is happy, I'll tell you what. The reason being, he starts out the 10th frame of the strike, but it's a four-bagger now for the University of Illinois, and they have put away the Seminoles, at least in our traditional game. Once again, as Randy pointed out, University of Illinois, they had the top score in round number one. Florida State, they weren't too far behind. They had the third highest score in round number one. There is a nine count as he leaves the 10 pin, so Rick Colemba will get one more shot, but already the Fighting Illini are in the two teams for this traditional game. That was another great shot. Left the ring in 10. That ball could have struck easily. And you know, you throw it like that, nine times out of 10, that ball will strike. Straight and hard. He switches ball, so a ball that doesn't oak as much. And that's why that 10 pin is easier to make. It's 213 to 170. The Fighting Illini have fought off the Seminoles of Florida State. Our traditional game is over. We've got Rock and Relay coming up, but first, I've got this question for you. If you throw a pumpkin, what have you thrown? A, a ball with no spin. B, a ball that knocks down only one pin. Or C, a ball that hits with no power. Well, we're going to be back there, my little pumpkin, for that answer, and a whole lot more as we continue with Rock and Bowl on TNN. Great time, and we hope you're enjoying Rock and Bowl here on TNN. The answer to our trivia question, if you throw a pumpkin, what have you thrown? The answer, C, a ball that hits with no power. Unless, of course, you're talking about a large orange vegetable. That is a very scary answer in itself. While we have finished our traditional frames of bowling action here on Rock and Bowl, we still have our Rock and Relay coming up, and the Fighting Illini, University of Illinois, have come away with a big victory in our traditional game, up by 43 pins. They lead Rock and Bowl frames by 10 pins, so a big 53-point lead, Randy. That's right, but listen, you know, remember, it's the total scores from round one and round two combined get you into the quarterfinals. And remember, Florida State, they had the third highest score in the first round, so they need to get as many pins as they can get in Rock and Relay. Because they want to make it into the quarterfinals and ultimately have a chance to win $10,000. The team that is in the lead will go first in our Rock and Relay. And for more on that, here's our Bell of the Bull, Taylor Baldwin. Uh -huh. We're rocking and rolling down here. Now it's time to go bowling with our last Rock and Bowl frame called Rock and Relay, my personal favorite. Now, here's the objective. We've got 30 seconds to get as many pins knocked down as they can, and every pin knocked down counts for one point. Now, how are they gonna do that? We have player one is gonna run to the ball rack, grab the ball, release the ball as fast as they can, run back, tag player two, we'll go to the next, he'll grab his ball, throw his ball down the line, and so on and so on, until they run out of time. So hopefully, they'll get through all the bowlers. We'll see, we'll see how Athletic, the skill and speed, baby, is all about. All right, University of Illinois and Urbana Fighting Illini, are you ready? All right, referee Bob Prevost, 30 seconds on the clock. Here we go. On your mark, get set, full. And the leadoff bowler is Kevin Rohr. We saw Kevin, he was all stoked up earlier, man. Had a really great shot. Good release there, gets it done, oh, and a strike. Yeah. 20 seconds to go. Remember, folks, skill, speed, and accuracy. Let's see who's got the whole package. 15 seconds, less than 15. We'll give you the countdown starting at 10. Hustle up, 10, hustle up. 9, oh, 8, good job. 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Oh. Good job by the Fighting Illini. You guys had a total of 36 in our rocket relay. 36 for the Fighting Illini. Oh man, we are just halfway there. We've got a whole lot more coming up. How about the Seminoles of Florida State? We can see that they know that Rock and Relay is coming up next, and we're going to get to that after this timeout. You're watching Rock and Bowl on Park, and we are ready to continue with more action in our Rock and Relay. And it's going to be the Seminoles of Florida State.
It's your turn, guys, to put up the best score you can. You were third highest in our first round. You want to make the quarterfinals. So Seminoles, are you ready? Bob Prevos, 30 seconds on the clock for the Seminoles. Here we go. On your mark, get set, full. And leadoff man, Bill Starkin, he's the senior. For the Seminole, oh, that's, that's the start. way to go. That's a lot. let's go. 20 seconds, you gotta go fast, you gotta oh, keep it moving, that's gonna be a tough shot, hook. but it hooks oh. back a little bit. Got got Still six. a six count, Hurry 15, up. less than 15. That's 10, up. 9, 8, no, 7, nine. 6, lot. 5, Get the shot. 4, Hurry. 3, Hurry. 2, you can do it. 1, and yes! Six, yes, it counts. It counts. Oh, and a seven, a seven pin score for that last shot for a total of 39. You guys win the rock and relay, but round two will go to the fighting line on University of Illinois at Urbana, 291 to 241. Congratulations! Tell me what is going through your minds right now. Jen, we hope you feel better. We miss you. It's good to be here. This is for Jen. a happy fighting Illini team. We can barely hear ourselves think. Not that we can think to begin with. That's going to do it for this time around. For Taylor Baldwin, Randy Peterson, I'm Gary Seibel. See you next time here on Rock and Roll on TNN. Good night, everybody. Congratulations once again to University of Illinois Urbana for today's victory and for winning $1,000. U of I's total score from the first two rounds stands at 559. Florida State is 484. As our other teams continue in round two competition, we'll tally their scores as well to determine which top eight will move on to the quarterfinals. From there, the top four move on to the semifinals and the top two on to the Rocket Bowl Championship to compete for $10,000 and the title.